Hi guys, my name is Ariana Chavez and today we're going to learn how to properly clean our instruments. Before I start with that, I want to let you know why I'm wearing this Prisma Protective Equipment. So let's start from the top to the bottom. I'm wearing this head cap to make sure that none of my hair gets contaminated nor does any of my hair fall into the instruments while I'm trying to clean them. Next, I have a face shield and I have a mask and I need this because I don't want any type of contaminated solutions or instruments substance to get in my face into my mouth and ingest them as for the goggles I need that because although I'm going to minimize um, the solution from going out of the decombination sinks it's still going to get somewhat into my face in order to prevent that I need to wear the goggles to make sure that my eyes are securely protected from that. If anything goes into my eyes, there is a eye washer 10 seconds away from me in order to clean my eyes really to make sure that stuff in gets away from my eyes. As next, we have a gown slash, as you can see this, it's an apron. I need to wear this because I am being washing a lot of instruments and I'm, I am going to get wet although I'm trying to prevent from getting too much liquid on me. This is to make sure that I'm protective against those solutions as well as contaminated instruments. I'm also wearing a, a boot cap and this is to protect my shoes from getting contaminated from the substance that I'm going to be approaching as well as I don't want to step any solutions or anything contaminated and then take it outside of the decontamination station, okay? So now let's go and let's show you the instruments. So I got four instruments in here. I got the mosquito clamp. I also got the curved male scissors, which is right here. I got the freezer suction tip and I also have the first Smith tissue forceps. I'm going to clean one by one and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first one I'm going to get here is the Frasier suction tip. This is used on small operations to make sure to take out any fluids and debris from the procedure. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to put it in there. Soak it in. Okay. As you can see, it's a little hard to clean up this substance. Okay. Next, I'm going to use a sponge. They have disposable sponges that you will throw out either after every use or after every, well, daily. You'll take it out. So, I'm doing it here. And I have to do it underneath the water. Okay, make sure I take all that out. I'm also going to use a toothbrush to make sure I get inside the tube. Right now, I'm letting it soak in horizontally so all the fluids could go in. Okay. Rubbing the ends. And I also did put a solution in here. It's a detergent, and this detergent makes sure that any type of so soil gets off the instrument. And this type of detergent is called surfactant. Oh, we gotta get my little toothbrush. Put this in here. Make sure it goes in. As you can see. There's residue in there. Okay. 
As you can see, there's still residue in there. Okay, looks like it's getting pretty clean. We're gonna put it to the side now. Just use so circuit to go any of the residues. Next up is gonna be the mosquito plant. Again, between the box lock. Okay. Let's clean. Put it in here on the first rinse. Next up here, as you can see, this one's called a fur smith tissue for sip. This one is used on delicate tissue, well, delicate internal tissue. And it's used to grabs on it. So we gotta make sure it's clean. Okay, we're almost done with this one. male scissors here and this ones are used for thick, thick tissue such as muscle and breasts get inside the box lock okay the other side the rings instruments in here and it is going to be combined with yellowtide water it's untreated water it's just to rinse off whatever is left ensure that everything's clean Once we know that they're very clean inside and out, we're going to transport them to the third one. And this is treated water. It's called critical water. Okay, this is for the final rinse. Okay. 
And the reason why we put it in here is to make sure that there's no spotty on the instruments as well to make sure that all the debris is out of the instruments. After this is done, after it's being soaked, we're going to have to put them in washing machines. It depends the instru instruments that they are. That's what kind of machine we're going to put it on. Most likely, this is going to go on an automatic washing disinfecting machine. And we need to make sure that the, all of the solids are out of the instruments so it could be an easier process when they're cleaning them. When they're cleaning them, they're going to use a spray, spray force. And that basically is a pinchment type of process that it uses water forcefully to make sure that all the instruments are clean. After that process is done, it's going to go into inspection to make sure that all of the solids are out, soil, blood, mucus. From there, we're going to take them to, uh, if there are multiple instruments, we put them together and then from there, we're going to sterilize them. And then from the sterilization, from there we have to store it. So as you can see, they're pretty much clean at this point. Okay, so for the first sink, I put 80 degrees to 110 degrees temperature. That is important to make sure that all of the soil is out of the instruments. And then after that, right now, they're just soaking in, making sure before putting them into the auto machine. There's another machine called the ultrasonic washing machine. And that one uses this cultivation, which is bubbles inside the water. And that's a different type of cleaning. They usually do those with lumens, um, any type of objects that have tubing, and they connect it to a different tubing within the machine to make sure that it's all clean within. So this one will most likely go there. As for this one, they could take the automatic ones, the automatic washer disinfector, and they should be good. Within the machines, there are different cycles. And from there, there's also different chambers, depending on the machines that they have. Uh, when it comes to instructions for use, they'll tell you more about it. Um, the FDA is actually responsible to make sure that all the instruments are used properly, how to use them, how to wash them, what are they used for. For example, this mosquito clamp is used to um, close the small vessels to make sure the blood doesn't come out. As for the curved male scissors, this is used on thick tissue as in breasts and a muscle. So the instructions for use is both for devices, instruments, or any type of solutions, products. Behind a chemical product, it will show you the instruments for use. And in there, it's going to let you know that um, how much to use of this particular solution. And if there's... Uh, any restrictions as they cannot be combined with any other solutions. One thing that you got to know is that there are some solutions that you cannot use on the instruments. For example, chlorine is going to damage the instruments, the finish off layer, as well as saline is another liquid that basically if you put it on the instruments, it's going to start making a rust. And that's what we don't want. We want to take care of all our instruments as, well, as much as we can. So from there, we did all of this, and then like I said, next up would be the automatic machine. And then from there, they'll inspect it, they'll make sure they're clean, they'll put it back together with multiple pieces, and then make sure that everything's fine, and then storage. Before you put it in the storage, just remember that you have to make sure that they're dry, because if they're not dry, then it could be easy for bacteria to grow on them. Well, I hope you like this the demonstration of the three sinks and have a wonderful day.